Hello and welcome to another video by ES Repair. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you today on uh, hooking up the cooling uh, CPU coolers on a processor. Um, as you can see, they come in different sizes, different shapes. Uh, these are typical heat sinks that you'll find. This one here uh, came from an AMD. Uh, this is a Simpron uh, heat sink. Uh, depending on how much heat they'll produce uh, will depend on how big the uh, heat sink will have to be. Uh, processors can run anywhere between 65 watts all the way up to 145 watts. So it's going to depend on how much heat these things will generate as to the size of the coolant heat sink cooler you're going to need. Uh, there are different ways that you can do it. Uh, you can do liquid or you could do passive which is a very large heat sink and you have to have the room for it. Uh, or you can use what's called active cooling which uses a fan attached to the heat sink to force the air to move along and keep your processor cool. Now this one here is an older one. Uh, it works fine but the fan doesn't have any speed control. Uh, it just runs off the uh, 12 volt supply line and that's it. And this thing is a little noisy because it runs about almost 6,000 RPMs which is pretty noisy. Well I'm wanting to build the quiet computer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to install this heat sink. Um, you can buy these in kits. Most processors will come with their own heat sink. But again, when you purchase these bare bone kits, make sure if it comes with a fan or, or a heat sink or if it does not. If it does not, you need to find a heat sink or purchase a heat sink kit that will work with the Pacific model because they do vary between AMD processors and Intel processors. So you want to make sure that you get the correct heat sink for that particular brand of processor. Uh, the reason for that is because you'll notice this heat sink here just has a latch. This AMD processor, uh, these are commonly found with just latches. You just latch the heat sink over these nipples that you see on the ends. And that's it. Whereas a lot of the Intel processors, uh, they actually screw into the frame. Uh, as you see here, the mounting frame here is on these four screws. Now, if you look in an Intel motherboard, you'll notice that the uh, mounting holes are further out um, across the board. So there's a huge difference between. Uh, heat sinks for AMDs and heat sinks for Intel. It, it's how they're mounted. Now you can get some like this one that are universal. They will attach to either a Pentium or an Intel or an AMD. So you want to make sure if you're going to get a universal or if you're going to get a specific heat sink for the processor, make sure it's working for that type of processor. Now what you'll do is some of these, like the universal ones, you have to put them together. Now, most of these heat sinks will already have heat seat compound on them. Uh, this one here isn't going to have enough because this is from the processor when I tested the computer. Um, I wanted to test the computer to make sure everything was working before I did the videos. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean this off and put a fresh uh, a fresh coat of heat sink compound. Now in your case you won't have to worry about it because if you buy these they already come prepared with the necessary amount of uh, heat sink compound. Now you'll notice the universal ones they have these screws on the sides of them and these are used to mount the appropriate um, attachment. Um, if you use Intel's, they're going to have an attachment for specifically for Intel mounting. Uh, this one here I have attached is for the AMD uh, processor, which in this case is an AM3+. Plus. So this is a match for my processor. So what I'm going to do here, as you can see, I've got all the screws in. You want them nice and tight. And you want to make sure that there's, and there's the heat sink 
is, is completely covered with a small amount of heat sink compound. Most of these will have a plastic cover them, so they'll already have them on there. But in this case, I've got to clean this and add fresh uh, heat sink compound. One of the first things that you want to do, um, as you can see, I've already got the processor in there from previous videos. What we're going to do now is to attach the heat sink. Now, the heat sink uh, uh, is going to be based on size. Uh, since you've handled the processor and you may have touched the, the top metal part, what we need to do is clean it first. Now you can get um, these Arctic Clean uh, Thermal Surface Purifier. What it does is it cleans the metal surface of the heat sink and the uh, processor to make sure that there's no grease or oil on top of the processor that's going to interfere with the heat transfer. So what you want to do, uh, you can buy these at kits uh, at any computer electronics store. It's made by Arctic Clean. Uh, you'll get a uh, thermal material remover, which is this one here. Uh, that's what I had to use to remove the material off the heat sink. You also have the uh, purifier that you see here that we're going to use. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to take a couple of drops. It doesn't take too much. Like so. I've got four drops on there, I know. You don't want too much, just enough to to clean it and then you want to take a, 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 lint cloth, a lint free cloth and you want to what this does gets any kind of fingerprints or any oil that you may have gotten onto the surface because you want it as clean as possible you don't want any kind of residue on there. Now once you have that done, give it a few seconds and or about a minute, let it completely dry off before you continue. Now the next step we're going to do, uh, this case is going to be an AMD processor. Uh, your processor, if it's an Intel, is going to be similar to this, but yours will probably have screws that you um, bolt it, uh, screw it down with. Now what I'm going to do here, I've already got the heat sink together. Uh, if you need to assemble your heat sink, follow the instructions. It will show you how to assemble the, the, the parts. Now what you want to do is you want to line it up with the processor once you have it cleaned. And I've got this one. This one does have uh, uh, some heat sink compound. Your heat sink should have it come with it. Now what you want to do is you want to line it up in some cases it's going to take two hands, especially these AMD processors. And what you're going to do is gently line it up. Like so. And you want to make sure that the lips or the latches line up with the ones on the base. It's very, very important. Now, once you have the heat sink in place, you'll need to line up the latches. Now, once you have one of the heat sinks down, Just like that. Now you may have little difficulties. You want to make sure that you get one side down, get the latch, then bring it over and then you'll be able to latch them on. Now you don't want to use too much pressure because it can damage uh, the motherboard and the processor or the socket. 
Now, as you can see here, <clears throat> I had the latch in. It's in firm. It doesn't move. Everything is securely into place. And that's how you want it to be. You want a nice, tight fit. Try not to use too much force. And once you have it latched, now you can begin to do the rest of it. Now you can take the cord. In this case, I'm going to wrap it around. That way it's out of the way. Now you'll notice you have the pin right here. Uh, this is a four pin connector that you see. Uh, let me zoom in so you can get a better look at it. Uh, you'll see this little pin right here. Uh, some of the boards use a three pin, some of the boards use a four. Uh, the four allows the system to manually control uh, the speed of the fan or the RPM of the fan. Uh, this allows the computer to run much more quietly. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and there you go. Now as you can see I've got it plugged in now as you can see here now I've got it plugged in uh, let me get the light here uh, so you can better see it and what you want to do you'll notice how the uh, the pigtail or the latch is on one side that's the side you want if you're using a three pin uh, the four pin, which is all by itself, as you can see on the right, on the left hand side, that is the uh, pulse width modulation for the fan. Some fans use four pins, some use three. If yours uses three, just use it on the side where it latches, as you can see here. Now, once the processor is ready, you've got the heat sink on it. Let me zoom back out, and you'll be able to see everything that I have on here now. Uh, I've got my heat sink on. It is latched on both sides. Uh, some heat sinks do screw down into the socket. Uh, some of them, uh, such as this one, clamps on. So you want to be careful when you're putting these on and not to use too much force. Uh, you want it to be firm. You don't want it to move. You want to be able to latch it correctly or screw it down in the correct holes and then you'll have yourself a heat sink. Now you'll see as we move along how much room is left. Um, I've got my hard drive and my optical drive in. I've got the memory modules in. I've got just a little bit of space between the hard drive and the fan and a little bit of space between the hard drive and the memory module. So, as you can see, uh, it's, you have to be very delicate when you try to put these computers together because if you don't have a lot of room, then it makes it a little bit tougher to get all the components into place. Now, compared to an ATX form, which is much larger, then you have more room to work with compared to what you see here. So, depending on what you're getting, if you're getting a board like this one here, uh, just be careful, take your time, and make sure that, you're, that you leave enough room for air to flow. Now, once everything's installed, uh, now that the processor's ready, the hardware and stuff's ready, I've got my cables to the front plate uh, connected, I've got my Wi-Fi hardware connected, and now I've got my CPU and my memory installed. Now all that's left to do is do all the connections to the computer and install the power supply. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. This is going to conclude this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next video that's going to be coming your way to uh, continue on building the computer. We're going to be installing the uh, power supply unit and begin to make the final preparations. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.